lighting is incredibly important when it comes to 3D art. It's how the materials are shown. It's how shadows are cast. It's how you create your story. You know, it's how you storytell. So it's utterly important and essential that you understand how to light a scene correctly, um, how to set the mood properly, how to analyze the lighting that you have in your scene, um, and also how to use references to to pick apart something that you're inspired by and to be able to recreate it. So today I'm going to be walking you through all of those steps and just to break it down for you guys to understand so it's nice and easy. We're going to be doing this in Blender um, but these um, these rules, these, these steps, they apply in whatever 3D platform you're using. So let's jump into it. So the absolute first step that you guys need to take when when doing anything in 3D art is to gather references. You need to gather reference images because it's how you base the success of your render on. How good an image is isn't necessarily, um, you know, just what the image looks like. It's also how well you followed your reference images. And it's a great way to step step back from the work you create and to analyze it in a non-personal way so that you can be more professional. So instead of thinking, you know, whether it's good or bad, now I want you guys to think, did I follow this reference material correctly? Was I able to reproduce this lighting or this material or, or cam camera composition, whatever it is? You need to start gathering references for absolutely everything, uh, you know, to do with 3D art. So my personal um, process is to be in Instagram. I do a lot of my reference gathering in Instagram. Um, and I have a Instagram, um, I guess, little folder or whatever you call it, of images that I find are good when it comes to lighting. So because I use Instagram as kind of my main output, I'm also using it as my input, as my inspiration. So as I go down here, a lot of these are just different times of days. You know, you've got your quite an interesting overcast um, lighting setup with, with the colors and everything like that. And then you've also got, um, you know, nice morning or afternoon, you know, very vibrant colors. So start by collecting some images that you think are really nice that you want to reproduce. Um, I personally really love these kinds of vibes. I, I use um, I use this typical lighting for a lot of the stuff I do. Not that, that's different. Um, so yeah, definitely gather reference images. It's so important. Um, and then once you've found one or two that you want to reproduce um, say I want say I like this one I'm just gonna use snipping tools I'm just gonna grab this and then I want you guys to download um, this program called pure ref you can get it for free and then basically you can use it to um, overlay over blender or whatever 3d software you use you can zoom in and out it's so useful I use it all the time um, and so what it means is that it stays over the top of whatever program you're using so you don't have to you know tab in and out of it so it's perfect so I've got that one there and let's just grab one more I quite like this one I mean obviously that the two different kind of color scenarios but they're similar in in terms of mood so we're starting to develop kind of a an idea of what time of day we want um, and I think that's pretty good. I might grab one more overcast one that I like. Um, if I do have one more, it might just need to be that one. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. The, um, the next step now is to wherever you guys get your, um, your 3D hdris um it might be polyhaven because there's free ones but there's also there's also pg skies which is a you know paid product but they have some really superb quality um hdris and i do personally use a few of theirs um but you can get 
incredible free HDRIs from Polyhaven. Um, I've got heaps that I use all the time. So once you've found your reference images, have a look on Polyhaven, download maybe 10 HDRIs that are of a similar sky and a, of a similar time of day and light intensity and you know softness hardness of the light the shadows all that kind of thing just get 10 that you like and then let's jump into blender and let's have a play around with them so i am in a um, project that i just did a behind the scenes of it's called Glowbox. check it out on my channel if you're interested and i just thought it would be an interesting process to show you how i might light this scene now at the moment i've got a um overcast kind of probably late afternoon cloudy hdri very very similar actually to the ones that i have here um and so these these references would be perfect for that but what i might actually do is um go completely the opposite direction and have a have a look at maybe a sunny time of day um and just have a play around with the rotation and i'll show you my steps for um you know the process of picking a a good hdri that works and then b the rotation um, and it's really important that we use um, pure ref because we're going to be taking little snippets of each angle of the hdri um, and um, yeah it's great to then take a step back and actually to analyze whether you know which rotation of the sun is the best for the composition um, and quite often you can actually zoom out when you're using this program you can put them all in a row and then you can see which one works so for this project here um, I did do a behind the scenes of it I pretty much did a 360 degree rotation of the HDRI to find the the correct light direction but also when it comes to the backdrop, what looks the best. So I basically did a 20 to 30 degree interval when it came to the actual HDRI. And then um, I just took a little snipping tools and then I chucked it in and then I did another one. So this is what it looks like with that cloudy HDRI. I think it looks pretty good. So let's imagine that um, if I go back to that one that I just did, let's imagine that I found a good HDRI. I tried 10 or so and I found this one which works quite well. Um, it's called, again, I, I reckon you guys should have a look at that behind the scenes because it's got a heap in it that you'll learn from. This one's called Clotesly Bly. Um, Clot, Clotesly, no matter... <laughs> I've done a few videos where I've used it literally no matter how many times I say it, I can't do it. Um, anyway, that's the one that I used. And let's say that for my camera angle, um, let's say this is the camera angle that I want. What I'll do is I'll start, um, actually, let's take it one step back. How do you actually import an HDRI just for absolute beginners? What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all this. In your world settings, if you come across here, it might be on object. If you come across to world, you'll basically have these nodes here. So the first step that you want to go do is go into preferences. We want to go to add-ons and we want to type in node wrangler. My one's enabled already. So you just want to enable that. That'll be there already. The next step is to drag this yellow th um, node out and then we're going to type in environment texture color press enter it's going to go purple if you're in cycles mode um, and that's fine it per any like purple color is just the textures missing so right now it's just saying there's no texture there now we're going to go and if you have um, downloaded a whole bunch of hdris you're just going to go find those so i'm going to quickly go to um, my hdri folder let's have a look um, and let's just find the one that I have kind of a cloudy folder. So I've, I've just got a few that I use all the time. This is the one that I'm going to go with. That's the one that I used. And it'll just load it in because HDRIs are actually quite heavy when it comes to memory. So you might want to decide whether you want to do a 16K or an 8K um, HDRI depending on the quality of the backdrop, obviously. You know, this... 
whether you actually want to see the backdrop, you might want to decide to go to a 16K HDRI. So it's totally up to what your scene is is wanting to do. Um, and if we have a look at these references while we're waiting, obviously they're different colors, but when it comes to the actual light intensity, they're kind of similar. This one's definitely more of a nighttime shot, but this is also... Um, quite dark and, and uh, moody so this HDRI has just loaded in the next step that I'm going to do and let's just hope that this doesn't crash because it's a incredibly heavy scene I might actually just turn the planting off just for the sake of making sure that it's not going to crash so um, again I have planting in another file that I've linked in and if you want to learn about that process just check out um, the glow box behind the scenes I'll chuck the link in the description so don't look at it now have a look after um, I think you'll find a lot out of that we're going to click on this node um, I guess this input node and we're going to press Control T and that's the node wrangler so that's what that plugin we just enabled is and basically that just saves you a little bit of time what we can now do is in the Z rotation Z is the Z axis, so if you can imagine the HDRI is your dome, the Z is the sky rotating around. So pretty much my process is I'm going to go 30 degrees to start with. Let's press enter and wait to see what happens. And then we're also going to have snipping tools up at the same time. So you might want to move um, pure ref off to the side to start with. So I'm gonna I've made I've pre-made cameras. So let's just wait for this to load. I've turned the planting off so it should be a little bit quicker. Um and that's really helpful when it comes to optimization. Cool. Okay, let's actually try another camera angle. Cool, so we've got this one here. Obviously you'd <laughs> you wouldn't see all those houses down there. That's just because we've turned off the ground plane and everything. But for the sake of this render, um, I'm going to change this to zero again. And then we're going to get a snipping tools of what it looks like at zero rotation. And then I'm going to go basically in 360 degrees and I'm going to capture every single 30 degree uh, interval and I'm going to paste that into pure ref. So I'll see you very shortly when, um, when I've done that. Okay, so hypothetically speaking, let's say that I did, you know, the full 360 degree um, snapshot of all the HDRIs. Um, I just did a few because it took quite a while. What you'll see here is that I have done a snipping tools of the render and then I've also got the, um, the world um, shader setting below and that actually shows you the rotation. So if I am in pure ref now, I can see which one I like and then I can go down and I know which rotation value that is so I can actually go back to that. Another quick tip guys is that you want to be enabling color filter in, um, in your window settings um, and then pretty much you can just go turn on color filters or you can actually click allow the shortcut key. Um, and then you want to make it grayscale. So you can turn it off again and then you just go control Windows C and that'll make it on and off. So if we go back to this pure ref real quick, we're going to turn the color filter on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out the, um, the foreground because if there's no plane there and then it kind of impacts the composition a lot. So if we're just going to, let's just zoom in a lot here. Okay. That's good. So let's say we had however many um, were broken up into 360 degrees and we've got color filter on. Now we can start to analyze the A, the where the sun is shining and how that impacts the architecture. So say your HDRI is very sunny, you're going to want to make sure that the shadows are shining, uh, are casting correctly based off where you want the eyes to lead um, if that makes sense because this is overcast it's a very forgiving time of day when it or um i guess weather scenario um lighting setup so you, you don't need to worry about that too much but if you've got like a very sunny day you want to think about 
Um, the most important part actually when you're doing um, all these 30 degree intervals is actually what the shadows are doing. But for this overcast scenario, it's just more about what the background is doing. So I'm just coming through here and I'm looking from an overall value point of view what works the best. And the best way to do that is to zoom out quite far. And I'm going to cut that off. And you want to blow your eyes a little bit. So as you look at these images, what reads the best? I'm actually going to cut the foreground off again. They all read relatively well, but there are a few that read better. I think this one at the end reads the best. And the reason why is because there's overlap. So, in some scenarios where you have the building lining up with the mountains in the back, it can be it can be very hard to read that kind of thing. This is also another strong composition. You've got a diagonal going behind the rectangle, you know, foreground kind of focal point. This one's pretty good too, but the value range is different, which may make it a little bit harder to read. This one's okay, but it just isn't as clean as well. This is definitely the worst. I think this is the best. And just purely because the values of the, the, the background are very similar, which helps the focal point and the, and the mid-ground to be read easier. And it really is important to go to black and white mode when you're looking at this because we're looking at value ranges here. If I go out of color filter, suddenly this is so much harder to read. You know, you, you get distracted by the saturation of the light, the colors, all that. Take it to black and white and focus purely on values. And you want to blow your eyes when you do this. You want to move it back when you do this. You want to just reduce the amount of detail that you're looking at. It is so important. So I really like this one, okay? And if I go down, this is 230. And coincidentally, that's actually the one that I've got here. And I think that looks quite good. So then you'd chuck the planting in, whatever you, well, you'd probably set the whole scene up first and then you'd do your um, your HDRI or however you decide to do it. Um, but I think that's, uh, that's pretty much the whole process for finding reference images, picking out the different HDRIs, checking them out in Blender, rotating around, documenting that whole process so that it, then you can look at analyzing the best one that has the best values and the best shadows you're going to be really analytical about this and it takes away the um sometimes it can be very intimidating to light a scene and uh, you don't know where to start so you know you start start with references find a few good h to rise analyze what the light's doing and just be really really analytical about it so um, that's pretty much it, and uh, and that's my that's literally my process for lighting a scene. It's it's really that straightforward. With that being said, it will occasionally take a long, long time. It could even take multiple days before you find the right HDRI and then the right angle rotation of it. And over time, you'll find some H HDRIs that you love and you'll keep using and I literally have three or four out of hundreds that I've used that I just use always. So I've got the cloudy HDRI that I use for cloudy scenes. I've got the sunny one. I've got the morning one. And if you just stick to a few really good ones over time, that can really help you save time and it creates consistency in your work as well because it will have a similar vibe. So yeah, that's that's literally it. I hope you guys have found this useful. If you have, please like and sub. Um, I'd really appreciate that. And then check my Instagram out if you want to see more of my work. It's Oliver Higgins Architecture. Um, and I'll see you guys next week. Cheers.